I've been sitting here f for hours trying to figure out what to put together. Honest. I've been sitting here staring at this wall and I started on these guys and I messed with him some and then I was kicking around with this little fella right over here and oh I'm just like oh, I need something different. We got what can what do I got that's different? So I'm sitting in my chair over here and I'm like wow what is this thing? What is this? It's certainly different because it's two rail O gauge. And all I knew of it that it's made by River Rossi and that is it. So I got on the Google machine and I typed in River Rossi 460 and come to find out that's the Casey Jones locomotive. I didn't know. It's the Illinois Central Railroad built by the Rogers Locomotive Works. Casey Jones, 382. <laughs> that's an that's original. It's different. That is something I think we're gonna work on today. Yep. For some strange reason, I happen to have some two rail O gauge Atlas track. Who knew? I've been told that these are DC and I can use my HO power. So I just hot wired it in here. I got a couple jumpers down underneath there. Give her some. Give her some love. Oh, now. Come on, baby. That thing is D-O-A. Yeah, yeah. It's my luck. But we'll take it apart, see if we can fix it. And hopefully sometime throughout this video, I'll learn how to say the state Illinois correctly. <laughs> I've been trying for eight months now. Illinois, Illinois, Il Illinois. There's no noise in Illinois, get it right. Before we tear into this thing, let's, let's cast our little peepers on it. It's the ugliest color I've ever seen. I don't know why, it's got some orange peeling right up here. Do you guys call these celestry windows? Or are they clear story windows? I've always wondered. Potato, potato. Pretty straightforward over here, tender, nice. I'm, I'm still kind of guessing this, this was the, key, I don't know, this was the kit one. And somebody elected to paint it green. Eek. Maybe they're colorblind. I don't know. This comes off, got some weights, and they're dusty. Dusty, dusty though. Oh, 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 what's going on here? Big screw right there. Have to dig out the big boy screwdriver for this one. We gotta take it apart, gotta get into it, gotta see what's happening. I gotta know how it works. Okay. So that come out, had this washer on it in a spring, and then there's another washer. Well, that just seems excessive. This, it looks like this, this whole, oh, well, this is interesting. The lights weren't even hooked up and something is rattling in here. I bet you this boiler cover comes off. Does it? Come on, Kim. Yeah. What do, what do we got in here? What is this? Whoa, that's, that's supposed to be screwed down. Looks like it would be screwed down where that just went into, yes. And there's another screw right there. Uh-huh, that boiler cover is completely black. Yeah, well, this isn't. What's going on in here? I wanna know why she didn't run. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it right there. That motor is not hooked up. <laughs> Whew, doggy. No electrical connections whatsoever. In the 70s, River Rossi started offering O gauge, two rail O gauge stuff imported under the AHM brand for the American distribution market. This particular locomotive was offered either as a completed ready to run DC powered locomotive. It was offered as a plastic kit, the static display. And then if you messed up and you bought the kit and later on decided you wanted a motor for it, they offered a motor kit just to motorize your plastic non-motorized locomotive. Somebody made some weird decisions there, didn't they? I think so. 80% of River Rossi's production was being sent to America, uh, imported by the AHM brand. 80% of their production, holy moly, 
downside those during the 70s that's when you no know, the kids didn't want to play with locomotives anymore they're like ah, what's that mouse so the uh, decline of model trains started happening in the 70s and well, let's take this apart we're here one screw here yes ew one screw here that screw's not very long taking out these brake shoes oh okay Guess those sit in there like that. Yeah, interesting. Here's a couple pickups right there that them wires, oh, they're in behind the wheels here. See that, they're picking them up off the inside flange. And so it's got six wheel pickup. That's neat. A couple screws holding this motor in. Just take it out just to see. That is a cute little bugger. It even says River Aussie right on it. Italy. Those don't turn very good at all. Holy jeez, you're kidding me. And you'd think they'd, they'd freewheel, but no. Get out the old test transformer here. Let's just see what we got. Well, that's, that sounds horrible. Let's throw a little Earl in that. This up here, this down here. It's almost like it needs to be run in some. So now this, what is this? Are these just being, yeah, held in? Yes. Oh, we're gonna have to push those electrical pickups in. Ah, that ought to make it hard. Okay, simple bushing here, here, yes. Those are free. So why is it so hard to turn? Well, I'm really glad that I took these out so it could be super hard to put them all back in. Yeah. Come on, little buddy. Well, let's just see if we get a little oral on this thing, if it works better. Give all these some love. And we'll do the same for the other side. Two, three axles. And let's do some side rods. Do a little piston love. Hmm? Ooh. Oh, yeah. That helped out quite a bit. Oh, uh, I, oh I picked it up. <laughs> and I don't know the retainers on it yet. This motor looks like it's got an adjustable, you can adjust the depth of the worm gear and the driven gear back and forth like this. Because it's got these grooves right in there. Wonder where we want to set that at. Not super tight, but not real loose either. I guess I'm just going to right there. Yeah. How about we get out our super lube, put a little on this brass gear. And this one here, steel, platinum. Titanium. What if I can hold on to this and spin this and do all this all at the same time? Oh, she's a seized. It's not enjoying whatever I did to it at all. I guess I got it a little tight. Maybe these things are so pathetic. You know, I mean, you don't know. I mean, it's a model you put together. Maybe it was just never meant to run. I just want to spin it so we can. Come on, there. Binding up pile. I took that motor out so I could put grease all the way around this gear. Cause it wasn't like in trying to drive it and spin it and everything. And I figured now's a great time to also take this fiberglass pencil, try to clean up these wheels. They have absolutely no dirt on them. I mean, this thing has never been run. It must've just been shelf queening all of its life, but it's just got some something on it. Clean up all these wheels. It, the thing really just needs to be run in. I went and re-oiled everything again. It's still got, a significant amount of friction but I think if it just ran it would come together that's what I'm hoping for yep put the gear case cover back on soldered a wire on there just so I could get something to grab onto hooked up to the transformer and we are a hundred percent right now just full full governor yeah I understand what is this thing output 15 volts. I suppose that motor probably O gauge goes up to 21 volts. Look at the precision engineering. Yeah. I'm gonna give her a little time. Just just a bucking. Bucking like this. Let her loosen up some. Well looky there. We even got an operating headlight on it. Oh shit. Yeah. Do a little creative wiring. Clean this body up. It's dusty. Ugh. It's been sitting. Sitting. A little soap and water. Yep. 
Not too shabby, I have to say. That, we're pulling four volts, and it pulls like half an amp. Yeah, oh. Come on, little buddy. Oh, dang it, you're sticky. Smooth. I only broke in and on the table for the first cigarette, but I had a bigger layout. Not a creeper. Five volts is really what it wants. Did a little creative soldering with the cab light right up into this area. It's not obvious. We got to shove it all together, put some bolts in here, have ourselves a repaired locomotive. Seems like it was missing some bolts back here. I'm going to have to source some up. Hoping maybe some 256s would fit it. Little wood screws. Yeah. Oh, that's too many. Two. I want two. Yes. Three eighths. Maybe a little long. We'll find out. Those are doing the trick. And number two. Now this fiasco. Not sure we got this. We got this. Then we got this. That looks pretty much symmetrical. And then we got to screw that into this. Sure, it's not going to, yeah. It'll be fine, I'm sure. <laughs> I put that little black line on that weight to help line up everything. That was a bit of a hassle. Used a pliers to kind of hold it in 12 fingers. And so that worked out really well. Hold that in there. Get the old boiler cover. Oh, sure. Now, unfortunately, this kit, it looks like it's missing one of the lanterns over here and the headlight assembly and grab handles that would be right there. And there might be something that comes down this way also. Missing a few things. Dang it. The 382 is a 460, or sometimes referred to as a 10-wheeler locomotive, built by the Rogers Locomotive Works in May of 1898. It was considered... Quite a little, quite a little powerful locomotive for its time. This one was produced for the Illinois Central Railroad. Its primary function at the ICRR was for passenger service. One of the things that makes this 382 so special is that it was engineered by Casey Jones on the day that he got in a crash and become part of pop culture at the time, I suppose. There's a, there's a bunch of music out there. Bunch of songs. You can go to the Wikipedia for Casey Jones and there's a list at the bottom of that thing. Where there is made reference in like 30 different songs. Oddly enough, one of the songs was referenced by ACDC. Yeah. And uh, another song by that rock group Motorhead. Old well, 382 it collided with the caboose from a train. It was on the switch, and the, the caboose it didn't switch, didn't clear the switch. And because there was another locomotive in front of him that was stalled out. Casey come along and <coughs> made a mess out of it. Messy. After that fatal crash of Casey Jones, 382 was rebuilt in the Paducah, Kentucky Railroad shops and put back into service. But they said that it was haunted now because it ended up killing like six more people <laughs> before the thing got scrapped. Oh. Apparently in January 1903, some, some delinquents, some douchebags, some criminals, some bad guys, they did something somewhere and they sabotaged it and and the tracks something it made the engine it crashed engineer he got scalded really really bad and the fireman ended up dying like three years later from injuries involved in this in september 1905 382 flipped over in the memphis south yards but nothing bad i mean it didn't kill anybody on that particular one it was going slow enough it didn't you know it was it was okay they <clears throat> set it back up in January of 1912, the locomotive had now been renumbered at 2012. It, it got in an accident and it killed four prominent railroad people. I don't know, the big wigs, the heads, you know, the guys with the, the guts and the cigar, I get it. And few others that were around there bystanding, taking out six total at that time. The locomotive was finally scrapped in July of 1935 and on the way to the scrapper, the guy that was the piloting, the engineer, the dang thing jumped the tracks, crashed, and killed that guy. Just, uh, the, the, the thing was cursed. Cursed. I don't even know if I want this in my collection, to tell you the truth. 
it could. Ugh, ugh. There's there's some Casey Jones museums around the countryside. Clinchfield Railroads 460. It was numbered 99. It apparently had gotten all dolled up to look like the Casey Jones locomotive, and it's on display at the Casey Jones U.S. History Museum down in Jackson, Tennessee. Did I say that right? I think so. And then the actual bell from 382. It survived the scrapper, and it's on display at the Casey Jones Museum. Vaughn? Vaughan? Vaughn? I don't know. Mississippi. Vaughn? I'll put it on the screen. Vaughan? Ah, terrible. But in my research trying to find more pictures of uh, any restored Casey Jones, there's some that have complete black boilers. There's some that have the silver painted on the front of the steam, the exhaust, and some got a green tender, some got a black, I, I don't know. So I couldn't even find anything, you know, maybe everybody's got one of these and they're all painted up like that. I don't know. They're just all over the place. Boggles my mind. Well, now that we got it all put back together, let's put it on the track and see how good it looks. Match it up with its tender. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, that'd look really nice. Oh, well, this little feller, he came out pretty cool. I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm happy with it. Better, better than I thought it would be. I got me one of these GoPro cameras here that I was farting around with a little bit, and... Apparently it doesn't like low light very well. Made some poor looking video, I apologize about that. A learning curve that I gotta go through. Sometimes guys, they wanna reach out. They wanna be able to message me. Go to my Facebook fan page, Facebook forward slash Classic Model Trains. The page will look like this. And you can go into, once you're on that, then you can message me and for things. Some guys wanna talk. Don't forget, I also got a, a new mailing address. For guys that like to donate stuff to the page, check in the description. All my videos have got my address down in the description. Plus it's also got the link to the Facebook page. Every one of them, in the, you gotta click the thing, boom, open it up. <laughs> I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.